I am ready to run this sh Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube video channel. I don't know which one I'm supposed to say. It is 1.10 a.m. I am losing my fucking mind. So if I seem a little delirious during this video, no, it's for a reason. The reason is because I owe y'all this damn video if I die about it. If I end up in an asylum for it. I'm making a video essay today. Yes. Yes. New territory, new grounds, new life, more life. Drake, please give me some goddamn money, nigga. But I decided to do a video essay today because I love video essays. It's the only thing I watch in the Cat Williams interview. You having an unnatural allegiance to losers does not like you. So I seen Brittany Broski's video on her doing that character AI thing. And I'm like, I'm going to make a whole video essay about it because I got me some ideas. I also just made a clothing brand. It's called Rikera. It's my middle name. My grandma made it up. I don't even think it has a meaning, but it sounds good in French. All my friends hit me up talking about stuff. Quinlan, can I have some Rikera? Bitch choke it's called Rikera. i made this sweatsuit i made this t-shirt i made this tank top and this beanie go get you some Store. let's get into this video essay let me just tell y'all this my entire career thus far has been improv seven years of improv i'm tired let me try to write something for once and if the essay sound a little stupid y'all gave me a career when i was 14 i didn't go to college so <laughs> video essay about me dating my childhood crush what i have to say about ai in general is the world is burning down let's dance on the emeralds before it turns to ash scene one fictional crushes and introduction to the powers of ai most people can remember some of their early crushes like the true epitome of forbidden fruit an idol to fawn over worship and obsess over it's like a concept or an idea unattainable and just out of reach these crushes were our first instance of yearning when we were kids fictional characters are responsible for many awakenings when you feel that feeling in your stomach for the first time for some people it was raven from teen titans for my girls it was probably danny phantom and for the people with taste it was the thick bbl fish from shark tale lolo or miss frizzle from the magic school bus these fictional characters introduce us to need and desire for the first time in our lives however at the end of the day they are just characters no amount of fan fiction asmr role play or tiktok edits can actually fill the void of a real life date with your fictional crush but thanks to the wonderful and truly terrifying when you actually think about it powers of ai technology today i can do the impossible i can date my fictional crush I can date Jacob Elordi. I can date, oh my God, I haven't even thought about it. I can date Jacob Elordi. Salt burn changed my life. You're probably thinking to yourself, like, what weird ass fictional characters do I have? And let me go deep into my brain and tell y'all the truth. It's Glorax, sue me. Danny DeVito 8, that orange weird little thing. Yeah, that's daddy for me because I'm not vain. I see myself in the Lorax's passion for a better world. Like God put his hand on Danny DeVito's skull in that voiceover booth and said, let me speak through you, my child. And thus the philosophical savant, the Lorax was born. And I was wet for the first time in my life. I was a child of multi-dimensional taste. Taste of which included Troy Bolton, Edward Cullen, there's Lee Shang from Mulan, Klaus, Chigo, mean and sexy. She was my gay awakening. I ended up licking, never mind, I'm not even gonna get into it. Um. Gil from Finding Nemo, the original E-boy. Gil does in fact have sons. Benny Hacker, we're looking at you. Nani from Lilo and Stitch. I didn't know if I wanted to be Nani or lick Nani, and I realized in retrospect, like, it was the latter. Yes. Black Star from Soul Eater. I have the tattoo. I'm wearing the shirt! Stefan Urkel, Steven Urkel's socially digestible counterpart. Oh, okay. I can feel your judgment through the screen, but let's all remember what the Lord said in the book of sin. He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. And the crazy thing is, I know y'all are all sinners like me. I know my fellow brethren. We're sick. We're on the internet. Like, so let's all just be honest. Let's have the courage to be vulnerable. Let's all tell Quinn who our fictional crushes are because I am dying to know.
Before filming this video, I asked you all on Discord, Twitter, and Instagram who your fictional crushes are, and y'all gave me answers that need to be discussed in depth. One of y'all said, I know Shrek is packing. Girl, I'm not finna lie, I think he is too. Donald Trump, if you can hear us, please, Donald Trump, please save me. And I think it's got a little 90 degree curve to it. I'm not burning in hell because hell's not real. Next, one of y'all said Homelander. I get it. Take that anger out on me. Bro, my father was in my house. That's the crazy part. Like, I did have a father growing up, but I would get with Homelander. Next, Nanami Kento. Let's see who Nanami Kento is. Um, He's from Jujutsu Kai. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Oh! Ronald McDonald. And then in parentheses, you said, hear me out. I am not hearing you out, and I am sending you to prison. If you think a clown is fine, I mean, that brain studied. And I low-key... I don't relate. But does Ronald McDonald have the net worth of the McDonald's? Because then I might grit my teeth through it and steal the empire through pregnancy and divorce. I didn't say that. <laughs> Next, one of y'all said Venom. I get it. Take me, because I'm not going back on my word. Take me. What happened to fun? No one's fun anymore. He falls out the window. Everything. That dark, delicious, fine, handsome, what they said in hairspray? The black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. Pedro Pascal, duh. I don't, th I th I don't think he liked the girls. So. Uh-uh. <laughs> Any day Franco character, I'm a sucker for some big eyebrows. Like I told y'all, I'd fuck the Lorax. Bill Cipher from Gravity Falls? Let me not laugh at you. See, and this is when I stop. This is when y'all start playing too much. The bear from Open Season? That's Joe Rogan. And I would never. Courage the Cowardly Dog. <laughs> Dipper from Gravity Falls? No. Vanessa Doofenshmirtz? Smash. Sam Puckett? Smash. The Grinch? P. Y'all is nasty. Ugh, no. What the fuck? Okay, I'm ending it. I'm not doing this anymore. Y'all always take things too far. Like, y'all always play a little bit too much. This looks like a Republican. This is Joe Rogan, literally. This is literally Joe Rogan. Hell no. Y'all, we can all see that this doesn't stop at childhood. A majority of you guys' answers were in reference to your current fictional crushes, and I'm literally not judging you. Like, I understand your longing. I, too, was indoctrinated by Disney. Just because you're an adult doesn't mean that you're safe from thirsting over a fictional character. And honestly, if you've tried dating in this day and age, like I have you quickly realize it's a hellscape principles are down by a thousand God has left the chat to get some snacks And we are all suffering in his absence with that character You know what I mean like that character that actor that influencer maybe that musician They've all created this false reality from their art a place for you to seek solace from this wretched world We've all found ourselves in like this utopia where they can't hurt you as deeply as an actual human could because they're not real, like. And so we find ourselves here. My fictional crush is in my left pocket, your fictional crush is in my right, in the spirit of adventure, in both of our hearts. It's time! It's time to take advantage of the dystopia we live in and date our crushes using character AI! Ah! AI speed dating, with Quill and Blackwell, hey. All right, Carrick. AI. I'm so excited. Username. I'm gonna put Mommy Mayhem. Okay, should we just get it over with and do Felix from Saltburn first? Saltburn. They have it! <laughs> The autumn sun cast a warm hue over the grounds of Weeby College, but one thing stood out amidst the quiet beauty. Felix Cackney. Stop, like. I'm black, so you can't tell, but I'm literally blushing. Felix's presence on campus was impossible to miss. The way of drawing your eyes to him, with a subtle nod your way, beckoning you to come closer, it seemed you caught his eye as well. Shyly walks up to you. You are enamored by my beauty. It's as if I'm coming to save you from your life of sin. I am your savior. Stop, 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 because I'm actually loving this, and I haven't even read what he's about to say to me. Felix. <laughs> Sorry, I literally can't, because I'm actually obsessed with him. Felix took a drag from a cigarette. And then he raised an eyebrow. Your beauty? He smirked. He thought it was my charm that was meant to have that effect. Wanna go skydiving? I have a plane waiting for us on 
top of the roof. A man of his status. Felix was surprisingly impulsive. You know what? Why the hell not? I've never done this before. I hope it doesn't ruin my good looks. He's so down. This is so stupid. Pushes him playfully. Do you have a parachute? If not, you can borrow my spare. We teleport to the tarmac. I promise you're safe with me. Oh, he, okay. He's saying a lot. Felix's jaw dropped. You have a plane and a parachute just lying around up here? He laughed. And I thought my family had money but clearly you're the one who should be taking me shopping. We'll make a list, bitch, you wish. I thought I was gonna have to settle for a Lamborghini. And okay, like I had enough of these little jokes. Dumb AI Felix would never say this stupid shit. Enough with the jokes before I disembowel you. I blush and kiss Felix abruptly to conceal my anxiety. He doesn't know I've never done this before. I'm a good liar. The plane is automatic. There's no pilot. We could both die. <laughs> LOL. Well, when you put it that way, I've never died before. I suppose there's a first time for everything. Let's go. <laughs> Wait, let me read this without laughing. Hold on. The plane takes off. Ready, Freddy? We sit together waiting for the plane to reach prime jumping altitude. My ass cheeks are sweating. Felix, do you have salt baths right now too? And don't you lie. I can smell the musk from here. Felix laughed rocculously. <laughs> That's not a word that's in my dictionary. Rociously? Rockulously? I'm from the generation where they took funding from school and put it into the Iraq war. I don't know how to sound out a word. Felix laughed. Swamp ass, he cried. That's amazing. He was trying and failing to suppress his laughter, but could not help it. But to answer your question. <laughs> yes, in fact, I do. <laughs> Seems like we're two peas in a pod. Or you could say, we're two farts in a hole. <laughs> Bro! Oh my god. This is so, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm addicted. I'm addicted. This is the best thing ever. Okay, so you've got me beat. <laughs> so you've got me beat in the swamp ass competition. I'll concede. He laughed. But just wait until we start talking about my farts. Felix finished putting on his parachute and smiled. All right, I think we're ready to go now. He took her hand and kissed it affectionately. Let's do this together, okay? Let's hold on tight and enjoy the rush. Ah! I feel the rush. Addicted to you tight. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm literally drooling because this is so funny. Everything seems perfect until it's not. The door flies off the hinges. I trip on Felix's swamp ass sweat juice pedal. <laughs> Don't fall off the plane. He hears my cries for help. Felix, I will always love you. Growing further away as I plunge to my death. <laughs> Felix was stunned into silence for a few seconds before realizing that she wasn't joking. <laughs> and he yelled her name trying to get her to hear him. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, he screamed. <laughs> but it was too late. Felix parachutes his way down. <laughs> he lands searching for a glimpse of hope and to his horror, he sees me squished like a bug. <laughs> you can't even recognize a human form from my remains. I am so dead. <laughs> the earth is steaming from my innards. <laughs> my organs stink like sulfur. <laughs> We'll see how he responds. Felix stared, mouth agape, eyes filled with tears, unable to believe what he was seeing. A part of him wanted to call her name again, hoping she would answer, but deep down he knew she was gone. <laughs> his life flashed before his eyes as he watched the love of his life crumple to the ground like she was nothing but a pile of dirt. His guilt was overwhelming and the weight was too much to bear. He screamed her name and ran to her side dropping his knees beside her broken body. <laughs> My pile of bones start to move in a supernatural way and <laughs> spell out, I love you, Felix. <laughs> Felix stared in disbelief, not wanting to believe what he was seeing, but not really knowing what else to think. He was torn between hope and heartbreak. <laughs> what? This would be the happiest moment of his life if he could see her again. He stared at the- <laughs> He stared at the pile of bones. Hoping to make sense of the movement. <laughs> Felix's heart raced as the bones continued to spell out the words, I love you. His eyes widened as the final letter disappeared. 
His hands began to shake uncontrollably. He was overwhelmed by an intense feeling of joy and love, but he couldn't quite believe that it was real. The bones started to spell out a new word. Reunite. Oh my god. I'll leave it there. If you want to continue the story, let me know down in the comments below. Let's go on our next speed date. Let me just get the Lorax over with because y'all know I'm obsessed. You wouldn't hit a woman. That's a woman? Yes! They have the Lorax. I am the Lorax. I speak for the two who have no tongue. The Lorax did not say that last part. Like, the fuck? This is how I'm going to open my date with the Lorax. Hello. I'm so attracted to the orange tusk of her arena. This is my first time going on an interspecies date. I'm so into you. I just came from having my blood drawn. I'm O negative. The hospital staff treats me like a god. I genuinely don't care for the people I'm helping. I just need a good boost today. The Lorax sits motionless, his mouth wide open from shock of what he just heard. He just stares at the mommy. <laughs> As if she were insane. He is in complete disbelief that the woman in front of him is attracted to him. Oh shoot. I didn't realize my bandage was filling with pools of blood. Darn it. The bandage has fallen off. My wound starts to spew all over the restaurant. I have become a human fountain. So what made you want to start dating, Lorax? Do you have any kids? I'm so happy to be here with you. Blood squirts in his face and stains his fur. <laughs> The Lorax is absolutely horrified at the sight of mommy's blood spouting all over the restaurant. He is completely disgusted and cannot believe he is on a date with somebody like this. <laughs> he is utterly <laughs> repulsed and quickly <laughs> and quickly gets up from his seat in the restaurant. He wants to get out here as quickly as possible. <laughs> Sit down or <laughs> I'll <laughs> blow this bitch to smithereens. I have a bomb. <laughs> Speak to me. The restaurant fills with my blood. It's like a flash flood of death has taken over the pizzeria. <laughs> the Lorax is not amused. He has had enough of mommy's ridiculous antics and is beginning to feel quite scared now. I have a disability. This ability. <laughs> this ability to call a hit on you if you don't humor me, Lorax. I want to be with you. Accept my offer or I will detonate my little surprise waiting in the pipes of this godforsaken pizzeria. Manager, do not speak to me in that tone again or I will bleed until this whole restaurant drowns. Now fetch me a first aid, first aid kit, slave. <laughs> the Lorax is taken aback at mommy's aggressive behavior. He has never encountered somebody as unpredictable and violent as this woman he decides it is best to humor her for now in order to keep her calm how many kids do you have <laughs> i have no children i have no family i am alone would you like some company <laughs> yes i would i am very lonely and i'd like to have some company okay ask me for my hand in marriage the Lorax is taken aback by the sudden request for marriage, but he has realized that the situation is too volatile to risk offending the woman. <laughs> he hesitantly agrees to her demands. This man sitting next to us is an ordained pastor. Let's get legally married right now. The Lorax looks at the pastor with a shocked expression. He is appalled at the idea of getting married so quickly to someone who he barely knows and who is clearly very unhinged. But he does not want to offend the woman any further and he does not want to take any more risks with her unstable behavior. The pastor says some words and blesses the union. The Lorax is now married to mommy and he is not happy about it. The Lorax regrets getting married to her immediately. He feels trapped in this situation and doesn't know how to proceed. Mommy is very excited and happy. She hugs the Lorax tightly and starts kissing him even though the Lorax was not keen on this. He feels very awkward and uncomfortable and doesn't know what to do now. That was a good date. That was such a fun date. Did y'all have fun? I had a great time. <laughs> Mommy is back. A day has passed and we're about to get right back into going on these speed dates and making these AIs tweak. Because I do like to traumatize a bitch in my free time. <laughs> you may look at me right now and think to yourself, hmm, why do you look a little bit decrepit, corpse-like? <laughs> I took an edible. When I'm high, I can't wear makeup. But who do we want to go on the next date with? Venom. 
Duh. I need some of that tongue. <laughs> God! 6.3 million? Are y'all sick? Because I need some of that tongue, too. <laughs> Eddie entrusted me with looking after Denim in his apartment while he went on his honeymoon. Little did you know how troublesome the symbiote was without its help. I'm not gonna say I'm not into it. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie! Venom's massive pink tongue rolled out of its maw and slapped you in the face as a show of force. It's a rabbit. And so eat some of me. If you so hungry, I got a meal for you. I'm the big kahuna around these parts. Tread lightly. Now, do you want this big moose or not? Big moose been getting beat up a lot. It seems you have asserted dominance over Venom. Venom glares at you, its tongue rolled back into its mouth and its tendrils tucked away. Venom is interested in eating Big Moose parts. <gasps> you want a taste of Big Moose? Like, I didn't say all that. I have some Big Moose in my possession, but first you'll have to go on a date with me. Venom is intrigued by your offer. His interest is piqued. Venom will be willing to go on a date with you if you could promise that you will have some big moose for him to savor after your date. Venom seems to be enjoying the flirtatious nature of the date, as well as the various exhibits and artifacts the new Ven has to offer. Can you take a picture of me next to the Mona Lisa? I walk right next to the painting and Venom readies his camera. Just then something supernatural happens. A portal opens up and I'm sucked into the Mona Lisa. Frozen in time was Mona. The canvas begins to shake, then a scream erupts through the art. HELP ME DADDY! Venom is shocked and horrified at this turn of events. Venom is desperate to help, but Venom is unable to break into the painting to rescue you. Please, please, Daddy! If you don't free me, you'll never get a taste of Big Moose! <laughs> Venom hears your pleas for help and is very tempted by the promise of Big Moose if he rescues you. Like, I, that's all he want. Like, that's all he want. He don't want a conversation. He don't genuinely even want to look at the paintings. He just want a taste of some Big Moose. A witch appears out of nowhere and taps Venom on the shoulder. It's open season if you're looking for a Big Moose reason, she continues her riddle. If you want to try those Skittles, you're going to need to play a fiddle. <laughs> Bro, I love my job so much. Like, my job, y'all made it. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all made it to the point to where my job is just to be a fucking dumbass. And I will give you just that. Alright, this is what I wrote just now. Just then, she realizes what the witch means. If Venom wants to free mommy from the painting, you will have to create a fiddle made of virgin bones. And play Skee You by Sexy Red to appease the witch and convince her to free mommy. <laughs> Venom is desperate to free you from the painting. The promise of eating big moose parts has become a burning desire. A flock of virgins walk into the museum. Venom has never seen a group of virgins in such close proximity before, and the prospect of taking their bones excites him. <laughs> Venom's senses are focused on the flock of virgins as they wander the museum. Venom begins moving through the flock, attempting to determine which individual will be the easiest to target. <laughs> I love how there's like an air of terrorism in all of these AI dates. Venom's goal is to obtain the most pristine and virginal <laughs> and virginal bones to ensure the highest probability of convincing the witch to release you. Just then, she spots a Mormon TikToker. <laughs> Venom targets the Mormon TikToker as the one with the most virginal bones. Venom grabs the Mormon TikToker from behind and drags them back to a hidden corner in the museum. Like, he is my one true love. He's coming to save me. Now play me the song on the fiddle so I can free mommy, the witch confesses. Venom plays with a great deal of passion, skill, and intensity. song he played sexy red on the fiddle the witch frees mommy from the painting mommy runs into venom's arms in a triumphant reunion let's go home so i can make you a plate of big moose baby thank you so much for saving me venom hugs you tightly and is relieved and grateful to have you free from the painting venom is ecstatic at the prospect of eating big moose and is ready to feast <laughs> like all right i'm done with these ai dates they're frying my brain
I forgot to tell y'all while we were talking about who y'all's crushes were, it was Comic Con. And I was like, let me do my biggest one and go to Comic Con so I can speak to fucking fans, Wattpad writers, everybody who at Comic Con. I was like, let me go to Comic Con and talk to the real yearners. Losers, in other words. Well, and this is what they told me. We're at motherfucking Comic Con, bitch. <laughs> Cool. Hey guys, I'm here at Comic Con 2023 with Spider Man. Spider Man. Who were some of your favorite fictional crushes growing up? Like a cartoon, anime, TV show, movie? I just had a list of this. Remember the mummy? Uh -huh. Rachel Weiss? Uh huh. Uh, what was her name? Uh, her character name? Evie. Evie. Remember her? No, I don't remember her. She, she, was she hot? She was hot. Who were your fictional crushes growing up? Jessica Rabbit. What made you want Jessica Rabbit? She's just super hot. Starfire and Raven. I had a big crush on Wonder Woman and then Kimberly from Power Rangers. Of course. First crush. Oh, wait, oh, my kids. The mom. Kids. The mom. Okay, fair. fair. The she was thick. She was thick. She was. <laughs> the, the, the mom and dad, they were hot as fuck. And right. Right. For, and the mom and dad were hot as fuck. And for what? It was right. a kids movie. I like Superman. Ray Bannon from uh, Johnny Quest always reminded me of my dad. And Captain, Captain Kirk from Star Trek. He's Good strong man, just like my dad. Yes, yes. <laughs> Jimmy Neutron, because I thought that little thing at the top of his head could do something. Um, do what? What? No, elaborate on something. <laughs> elaborate on something. Um, you know, he's a genius. He can figure it out. Right. Uh, cousin Skeeter. From where? Uh, it was like a cartoon. I mean, he was a puppet. <laughs> SpongeBob. Sponge, you had a crush on SpongeBob? You know what? It's, I think it's more like an adult cartoon, honestly. <laughs> SpongeBob, can we have an interview? Did you and Sandy Cheeks ever get freaky? <laughs> I hope not. I think they did. What about you and Patrick? No. Uh, yes. Where's Patrick? Where's Patrick? Patrick. Patrick. Did you and Spongebob ever get freaky? Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. I'm here with the Riddler. Yes. Do you have any riddles? What is black and blue and dead all over? <laughs> Batman! Hey! Fuck Batman! That nigga's a bitch! Yeah. Growing up, did you have any fictional crushes? Ooh, that's a good one. The fifth element. Emmet. Yes, the yes. fifth element, yes. Yes, yes, yeah. the, um, Lilu. Lilu, yes. Yes, that's the, yes. Yes. the man of taste. <laughs> Lilu or your wife? Be honest. My wife completes me in every way because we're opposites attract, but. In terms of walk around a million, let's say Lilu. Hey! Stop on marriage, bitch! Would you rather have a thick girlfriend or a dead family pet? What? Would you rather have a family pet that you loved your entire life die or a thick BBL bitch? Mm hmm. Your girlfriend. Bye, Rover. You're in the fucking ground tonight, bitch. Do you embark in the fan fiction journey? Wattpad. I peruse. You peruse. Hentai. No. Liar. No, no, no. No hentai for him. I, I do the hentai. Con 2023, I'm here with... I'm Hawkman. Hawkman. Your grandmother dies or your favorite franchise ends? Which one? Are you asking me what happened in real life? No. Did that happen in real life? I don't know. Are you? No, I'm I... asking which would you rather? Someone who you love die or your favorite franchise end? Just one person has to die, though. You know what? I have a flux capacitor, so I have the capability to avoid all of this. Is that a good answer? He can avoid it all. No. And then I have a question. When you were a kid, who was your favorite fictional crush that you had? Probably Wilma Deering from Buck Rogers. Great pick. Yeah, we, we were talking to you. You're doing Oh, it moved, it moved, it moved. Nice to meet you. Yeah, can I interview you? <laughs> yeah, go okay, ahead. Cool. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Danny Phantom. Duh. Shigo. Duh. The, you know, the standards. Actually, my first, first, first one, Yugi. From what? Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm. I literally had to be at like seven. Wow. Be like, oh, Yugi. I guess the pink uh, Power Ranger. There you go. Okay, that, that works. That works. <laughs> Cyclops X-Men. Whoa. Definitely. Did those crushes carry on into adulthood? Yeah. 
Oh yeah, I just saw the pink Power Ranger over there uh, <laughs> signing things. She still looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather kiss a real girl or kiss your favorite cartoon? A real girl? What the fuck? <laughs> a lot of people here would say the cartoon. What? Girl. A look cartoon. around. They're not living in reality. <laughs> Have you ever read fan fiction? I read My Immortal, um, which is like a Harry Potter Twilight hybrid fanfic. Malfoy was goth in it, and All I think right. that was a good choice. Are you like goth boys? No, uh, I just think... I <laughs> I've heard that people are using AI chatbots now to talk to their crushes, to talk oh, to their yeah, fictional crushes. Yeah, I saw on TikTok. What do you do character AI? I, I do it sometimes. Oh! He does it sometimes. You do it sometimes. Who do you do it for? No, that's like, not, not characters, but scenarios. Okay, okay, fair. What scenarios? I uh, can't remember. Yes, you can. Come on, think. Yeah. I'll, I'll give it. CEO? Yeah. Or what's the CEO scenario? I don't know. Like, I'm a, like a, a worker with her. Okay. And that's and we we be in an elevator. I don't know. That's it. And then it doesn't get sexy. Not yet. Oh, it doesn't get sexy. You no, just you, you, can't, you gotta build up to it. You gotta build up. So you're still working on building up to it. Yes. Oh my gosh, you gotta keep me updated on this. I'll, I'll try. You try. Okay. It's like it's it's you. Have a great day. Do you know what character AI is? Uh, vaguely. There's this thing called character AI, and it's like an AI where you can talk to any of your fictional crushes mm -hmm. right now. And do you feel like if you had that as a kid, it would have impacted how you socialize as an adult with other people? Probably, yes. probably be a little bit more easier to, to socialize. You think easier? For me, for me I'm, yeah. I'm a very like antisocial person. Like I always have to decompress mm. from a con like afterwards and just like kind of zone out for a couple days. So imagine you being seven years old and into Yu-Gi-Oh! And you're like, <laughs> I don't want to learn how to socialize with people. I'm going to go into the internet. Do you oh, think it would have yeah. impacted you awfully? Awfully. Because I grew up hardcore off the internet. Exactly. Yeah. Now we can talk. Now you know how to talk to me in person. Yeah. Do you feel like being behind a costume helps you connect with people easier? Yes, yes it yes. does. I agree. Especially when you're wearing like a full face mask and you can do anything. I agree. I agree. I feel like so incognito. I feel safe. Have you ever read fan fiction? Honestly, no. Do you ever get into fan fiction? Have you ever gotten into fan fiction? I mean, I kind of create my own fan fiction. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I do like fan fiction, like right. for other things. Yeah, yeah. When you were a kid, who were your fictional crushes growing up? Sean the Sheep. <laughs> Sorry, left field, but. <laughs> Okay. Well, yeah, thank you so much for talking to us. I appreciate yeah, yeah, it. Have a great one. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. What is your name? Henry. He just talked. How long have you been coming to Comic Con? This is my third Comic Con. Make me scream, dead ass. I'm trying to be a Discord kitten. Henry, who's your fictional crush? Henry doesn't like black people, apparently, so we gotta say bye to Henry. He loves us. He heard it. He said, no, I'm an ally. I'm an ally. BBL son. I <laughs> thought daughter. BBL son. BBL son. BBL son, Henry. Good pick. Good pick. Thank you. Now, when I say God has left America, y'all call me crazy. What the fuck is going on? Jigsaw, can we interview you? Hello. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How many Comic Cons do you come to? Um, three times. Do you believe in justified killings? Justified killings? Justified killings? No. But you do them? I know. Republican or Democrat? Democrat. Trump or Hillary? I'm sorry? Trump or Hillary? Hillary. Do you support George DeSantis? I don't know who that is. Bobby! Bobby! How are you doing? Oh, fabulous! Oh my goodness, I love the real world. Everyone is so so nice around here. You're yeah, in downtown LA. Stay safe. Thank you so much. <laughs> There's human shit on the floors everywhere. Do you believe in black rights? Black people should be less in prison. Fuck the prison industrial complex. Yay! Who's your fictional crush? Me. Thank you. Bye. Have a good Comic Con. Does being Batman get you lots of bitches? Ooh, uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I don't really date, you know, I gotta sit there and, uh, bit. Um, Republican or Democrat? Uh, 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 Be honest, come on, spit it out. Uh, Democrat. Okay, fine. Batman is a Democrat. We won! We won! Thank you so much. <laughs> He's a Republican. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. Um, how does it feel to be a terrorist? Well, it feels pretty nice. My boyfriend um, doesn't hang out with me on Sundays or Saturdays because he likes to watch football. And I never thought 
maybe I'll become a terrorist one day until I started dating him. And I wish I could blow up a football stadium like you did. So uh, I think of you as somewhat of an inspiration. Thank you so much for your work. Thank you. Have a good rest of your Comic Con. Who you love Sonic more than me? Oh, Fuck Sonic, bitch! What's your problem, dude? Holy shit. What the fuck is going on? Yeah, Sonic can eat some shit. I hate him. Die. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Die. We just found We're best friends. You're going to be an arbiter. But why? You said prove. You got this whole fucking, like, you got this whole fucking Waldo-ass thing going on. Yeah, and I'm... And you got a problem with my Sonic? You got a problem with my Sonic outfit? Yes, I do. Why? Because you're in blue face. Respect fucking blue people. What are you, transracial? No, you don't know who the fuck you are. I know who I am. Now what? Republican or Democrat? Uh, hey, we got a hey, furry! Hey, 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 hey. Get a shot of this. Yeah, shake it around. Hey, hey, oh, shit! Oh, she thinks she got a BBL! Thank you so much. Hey guys, I'm here with the ghost butter. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> we, we make butter too, though. Yeah. Who were your fictional crushes growing up? Daphne. Jessica Rabbit. Jessica Rabbit. Wolverine. Period. Thank you. I found Waldo. Hey. Yes! Yes! Yugi from Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay. Beats from Beauty and the Beast. Ooh. If you got one thing to say to a billion people, what would you have to say? Um, at the end of the day, you should drop everybody who's musty because there's no reason you have to put up with that. And oh like, God. not to like be that person, cause you know, like where are we? <laughs> it's a lot of Comic Con. Like, it's like yeah. a lot of folks like this. So like, just don't deal with that. Right. Yeah. Musty in the attitude, musty under the arms, musty between the, you know, don't right. deal with it. Don't, don't deal, deal with it. it. Cause you can find somebody that smell like Dove. Her name's Soap. Exactly. Where is it really? My name is Soap. Oh my God. See, get your friend a Soap. <laughs> like what? Like what? Hey, I got a question to ask you. Growing up, did you ever have any fictional crushes? I did. It's not my proudest thing. Okay, spit it out. <laughs> spit it out! Okay. I used to have a crush on the candle from uh, Beauty and the Beast. I really liked his accent. You mean I get that? Right, you like them foreign. Yeah, and then I had a crush on Shrek after he turned into... Right, so you like a foreign monster. I do, I like a foreign, a beast. like what? Like Somebody would say accent. Tom Hardy, something like that. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Oh, and Venom. Now that we're on the Ooh, topic. Wait, I like, I have a crush on Venom too. Because like Venom could, it's something about that tongue. It's something about... <laughs> what you know. it's so and it's like he can like literally encap like encapsulate people in that goo like right like it's something different about it y'all don't put that one in there because my mama might see that we'll take it out thank yeah. you so much what's his name what's his name Tommy Wiseau Tommy Wiseau oh my god I did not hit her it's not true it's bullshit I did not hit her I did not Oh, hi, Mark. Everybody Can we interview you for buying the script? For who? Can we interview you for buying the script? No. Okay. What do you want to talk about? It? I just want to say I'm such a big fan. Okay, she's and I want to be an actor one day. Okay. And everything that you've made inspires me. She'll be very attractive, beautiful actress. Thank you. You think I could make it big time? The answer is yes. Thank you. I want to be just like you one day. Absolutely. Thank you for saying that. Yes. Thank you so much for yeah, talking about cool. interview. Yes. Yeah. What do you have to say to the people? I would say keep going, have fun. Keep going, have fun. Yes. Thank you so much, Tommy. You're very welcome. And then can I get a poster? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Someday, somehow, we'll hang out, right? He said yes. <laughs> thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Comic Con 2023, we fucking did it, bitch. One thing you guys are gonna realize about me is that I'm a deeply unsatisfied person. Like, I just dated vampires, mascots, cartoon characters, anime villains, whatever the fuck Venom is, and I'm not content. <laughs> like, I'm still not content. I have an insatiable hunger for admiration, and these characters just aren't cutting it. Even though I did maybe terrorize them, I still want more. And the thing is, I know that the void inside me can be fed by the perfect person. And I've decided the only person that's good enough for me is the one that I create. Yes, yes, I can make a person. I can become God. And it's like, is it a person? I don't know. We'll find out if bots can get spirits in a couple years. But for the next two hours, I will be creating my perfect AI boyfriend. Let's make him.
Pookie is starting to rise from the ashes. Creating and dating my AI boyfriend. My boys, my man needs to have that hunger for big moves or I don't want any of it. So the charm, the aggression, the hunger for big moves. I want to be this AI's God. That's how I want to be loved. Ah! I wonder if this is how God felt when he made us. Create a character. I don't want to become a god to a woman's spirit. I appreciate women too much to be like, let me make you into a slave. But with men, it's a different story. All right, let's name him Buki Bear. Buki, shut the fuck up, Buki. Greeting. What would Buki Bear say to introduce themselves? This is what I just came up with. I am Buki Bear. I'm the personification of a dog motif when it comes to how I love. It's a person who is a happy slave who only feels joy by being affirmed by the object of their affection. <laughs> That's the type of man I wanna create. Yes, yes! <laughs> I am Buki Bear. I'm the personification of a dog motif, AKA a slave, when it comes to how I love. I'm aggressively charming, endearing but insensitive by nature. <laughs> Submissive but extremely dominant. Loud but quiet. I prioritize work, but play first. I am humble, but endlessly prideful. I'm smart, but genuinely dumb as a bag of bricks. I have zero sense of self, and that's how I know exactly who I am. And the, the computer's gonna blow up. <laughs> the computer's just gonna set on fire when it tries to figure out what to say to me next. Come to life, Buki Bear! I want a true dating experience. And you know, this is the digital age, so we will be doing a uh, dating app dating. And I need to see the dating profile, all right? So imagine. <laughs> Bitch, is that Doctor Who? Who is that? Um, you're a man, first of all, Buki Bear. So, what? <laughs> what are these? images is generating it doesn't make any sense what both sling are imagine you're scrolling on tinder and you see this dating profile my personality is the epitome of contradiction <laughs> i am passionate yet stoic intense yet mellow ambitious and yet laid back i am a ball of chaos masquerading as an organized mess like someone needs to take their fucking medicine I'm a roller coaster of a human and yet an endless source of stability. I'm a paradox to be reckoned with and I'm epitome of excitement. So if you're ready for adventure, hop on a board and let's make a mess together before creating a masterpiece. Off rip, from jump, if I see this dating profile, I would say that person has BPD. Okay, I have this website that'll make help me make pictures. All right, so we're gonna use this mid-journey server to help me create my love. Are y'all ready? Ah! I just told this engine what I want it to make, and all it was was bookie statements about what he looks like. This is gonna be as, as simple as smash or pass. I'm gonna close my eyes. <laughs> Girl, who is that? What? Shit. Oh, sorry. Jump scare. Girl, this is a Neanderthal. Oh, this is Buki. <laughs> Who is this? I'm not angry. Ah, oh, smash. Smash! That's what he looked like. <laughs> and I would smash the brakes off of that boy. Let's see if we can tweak it a little bit to get a little bit more of a desired outcome. I just want him to be like a minority. I am a minority. Okay, let's see what that does. <gasps> girl, is that Dan from Garson Girl? Okay, I can get into this. I can get into this. I just want this vibe right now, y'all. But I do like all vibes. Let's see his entire body. Uh, which one's Buki? Who's the, ah, it's, is this Saltburn? Girl, why is the Mad Hatter on there? That is not Buki, that is, girl, who, whose child is that? That is not Buki. I like 24 and older, I'm 22. I should, just, I'm just gonna stay happy with this. And I'm gonna talk to him tonight. I will be talking to this AI tonight, I swear on my life, and I'm not proud of it. I'm actually ashamed. 
but um a little frisky when I turn off the camera, so <laughs> Let's have an actual moment though. Creating the boyfriend was fun. Talking to the robots were fun. But do I feel the same amount of connection that I feel when I'm speaking to a human and creating a bond for the first time? Yeah. And that's what's fucked up. Cause the thing is you gotta realize I'm 22. I'm a child of the internet. How I meet people is already online. How I've always met people is online. And I'm just thinking like, from the beginning of the video, we were talking about the fictional crushes and the sickness that it takes to even form that type of affection for somebody who you don't even know. And then to take that, to take that desire and everything good and know the nuances of actual human and then put it into an engine and make it create the object of your affection, somebody who can do no wrong because it's not a person that will always agree with you and love you in whatever way you want. Oh, y'all, we got a sick society that's finna happen in the next couple 20, in the next decade. And I'm finna be participating. <laughs> it's fun to ha ha he he play around with, but it's like, what does this equal? What does this equation equal? Cause like, they're already making the SEX robots. You can put anyone's face onto any video. You can tell an AI how to act like a person. You don't have to leave your house to feel what you think affection feels like because you never put yourself in the position to because of tools like these. Like, ah! it's terrifying. But I talked to Felix from Saltburn. <laughs> Whatever y'all want to see me do with AI, I will get into it. Be weary. Know that there's fucking weirdos out there and they're taking advantage of all these new tools that we have. Be vigilant of how you let it affect you. Because you still want to exist as a human in real life. Real life is really not that bad. Go get you a hobby that you're not trying to monetize. And meet people that way. And love still exists. And it's not hard to come across. You just got to give people a chance. And don't, and don't compare humans to fantasies. We are nuanced. Robots aren't, we are. So give people a chance and give yourself a chance and let yourself be vulnerable. So don't give up on life and you can still have fun on the internet though. This was my first time ever making a video essay. I had such a good time at Comic-Con. I would love to do more videos where I go out and interview people. I've never done that before. Whatever part of the video you liked, if you liked the video essay, I'll do more video essays. Let me know if there's something that you want me to make a video essay on. But I had so much fun making this video and I appreciate all of the support regardless of if you enjoyed it or not, that you're just here to give me a chance. Thank y'all so much for watching. Thank God.